This video is going to look at examples of probability problems. First example, a card is chosen from a deck consisting of 10 cards numbered 1 through 10. Describe the sample space of the experiment. Well, the sample space tells us everything that could happen, and we typically list it in squiggly brackets. So if we've got 10 cards that are labeled 1 through 10, our sample space would be a card number with the number 1, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So that would be our sample space. We have 10 cards, and then each card has one of the numbers 1 through 10. So the probability of drawing an odd card, we could say the probability of drawing an odd, this will be the number of odd cards divided by the total number of possibilities. So our odd cards are the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. That's five of them. And then we have 10 total choices. So the probability of drawing an odd is 5 out of 10, and you are welcome to leave all of your probability answers as unreduced fractions. Please do not feel that you need to reduce or simplify. When students do reduce and simplify, they tend to make careless mistakes and get things wrong. So whenever I'm grading something, you can leave it just like this as an unreduced fraction. All right, next one. What is the probability of drawing a number, of drawing the number 2? So we're trying to find the probability of drawing the number 2. Well, there is one card in the deck with a number 2 on it, so there's just one way to do it. And then we've got 10 possibilities. So the probability of drawing the number 2 is 1 out of 10. And what is the probability of drawing a card that is not divisible by 5? So often if you see the words at least, at most, or not show up, generally it's easier to use the complement rule than to do the problem directly. So we see this word not showing up. Let's try to do this one using the complement rule. So we're trying to find the probability that it's not divisible by 5. And the complement rule tells us that this is equal to 1 minus the probability of the complement. And the complement is just the opposite case. So the opposite of not being divisible by 5 is that something is divisible by 5. And so this will make it a little bit easier because instead of trying to figure out what are the numbers not, we just need to find the numbers that are. And the only numbers in this list that are divisible by 5 are 5 and 10. So there's 2 out of 10 that are divisible by 5. So the probability that something is not divisible by 5 is 1 minus 2 out of 10, or 1 minus the probability that they are. And we could have done this directly. We could have counted up all the numbers that are divisible by 5, but sometimes it's a little bit easier to use the complement rule. And again, you can leave everything as unreduced fractions, just like I've got it on here. Okay, next example. On a shelf at a gaming store, there are six Sony PlayStations and five Nintendo Wii consoles left. If one gaming system is selected at random, find the probability that the system is a Wii console. So we're trying to find the probability of picking a Wii. So it says that one gaming system is selected. So we're just picking one thing, and we want to find the probability it's a Wii. So let's see, how many Wiis do we have? We have five Wiis. And then how many total games do we have? We've got six plus the five, so that would be 11 total choices. There's a five out of 11 probability of picking a Wii. So one thing to note, this example that had the real life data, we would call this empirical or experimental probability because this is coming from real life data. You went and you looked on a shelf and you counted the number of games and now you're trying to calculate a probability based on some type of real life data. Whereas the card example, this would be classical or theoretical probability because we have some set established scenario where everything is set, it's equally likely, it's not going to change, and we're doing probabilities with it. Um, the math itself is the same. It really doesn't matter if we're talking classical or empirical. The only difference is, was our data already set and established? That makes it classical. Or do we, do we collect it from some real-life scenario, in which case it's experimental? 